Okay, so it's these moments that are my favorite moments here at Spalding University. I, I actually care about education. I really want to learn uh, the different ideas that are out here, and I would love to have a real discussion. So at any moment, at any time, my classmates could have stayed afterwards. We could have looked at the resources that we have here on campus. We could have talked about what our plans are when we want to get out, what jobs we're going to look for. Um, and there's also there's so many commonalities. I mean, we're going through the same shit. We're in the same position. We're having to do the same bullshit homework. And uh, just like a union, when you stick together, then you can actually get the balls to do what you want. Um, or they'll just do strike break and bring in some scabs and just divide and conquer, which is a very effective um, uh, tactic of the oppressors. So the oppressors just want, you know, just to be able to control you and just dominate over you. Now, I pulled up this article here to start off with um, about this gentleman here. He says, teacher's resignation letter. Okay, so this teacher, Gerald J. Conti, a social studies teacher at West Hill High School in Syracuse, New York. Okay, so Gerald J. Conti, Gerald J. Conti is, is a social studies teacher at West Hill High School in Syracuse, New York. He's been a social studies teacher, we'll find out, that at least 27 years. Okay, so this Gerald J. Conti, this man who's been uh, more than 27 years of service at West Hill, is quitting. He's, he's offered his resignation. And the reason why, he says that, uh, I, I not find that this, let see, he, his, his idea of education is to get totally immersed in education, right? If you actually believe in education, you'll want to get involved in it, and you'll be able to move it around and then make it your own. And that's true. That's exactly what education is. But he says instead of education sort of being that exciting sort of, I want to hurry up and find everything I need to know about Tecumseh and give a report because Tecumseh is a badass. Instead of doing that, what's happening now, according to Mr. Conti, is uh, he says, I now find that this approach to my profession is not only devalued, but denigrated, perhaps in some quarters despised. Uh, STEM rules the day, and data-driven education seeks only conformity, standardization, testing, and a zombie-like adherence to the shallow and generic common core, along with the lockstep of oversimplified so-called essential learnings, creativity, academic freedom, teacher autonomy, experimentation, and innovation are being sh uh, stifled in a misguided effort to fix what is not broken in our system of public education, and particularly not at West Hill. So he's talking about the generic common core. He's talking about the zombie-like adherence to the shallow and generic common core. So he's not a big fan of common core. He's not a big fan of conformity or standardization. Um, and so, uh, you know, he, he's, I guess, as an educator, as an educator who could kind of like do this lesson and do that lesson and be able to speak freely, sort of like how they're doing in Finland, they don't have that, um, that opportunity here. His profession no longer exists. So he's like, my job don't exist. Why do you want me to keep on coming up here just to repeat the same, you know, the fucking common core shit? It just wasn't stimulating for him. It wasn't interesting and fun for him. And, um, and so when he keeps on going and then eventually he talks about it, sort of like all the old Republicans. He says, after I realize, after I write all this, I realize I'm not leaving my profession in truth. It's left me. It no longer exists. I feel as though I've been played some game halfway through its fourth quarter. A timeout, timeout has been called. My teammates' hands have all been tied. The goalposts moved. All previously scored points and honors expunged. And all the rules altered. So that's, uh, that's, that's basically what he's saying. He's saying that the, uh, the role, his role as educator in the classroom is no more. It's, um, his, his responsibility isn't being taken serious. And it's totally ridiculous. You know, he's frustrated. Um, that being said, there's the old saying, those who can't teach. And, um, and that's, that's very true. Uh, there's so many educators out in this world who have done nothing else except for educate. Here at Spalding University, the main, the main emphasis, the main thing that they wanted us to learn was, was compliance. You know, you're a bitch, shut the fuck up, sit down in your chair and, you know, bite your damn tongue. I'm the fucking king, I'm the fucking professor, and you shut the fuck up. I don't know if they're just that obedient. They can't be that obedient in, in the world. I think they're just playing the game in order to get a piece of paper. So hopefully they, they know it's all bullshit. But what if they don't? What if they're rationalizing it? I'll be a bitch in this chair. That way I can make them bitches later on. My problem with that, by forcing compliance and obedience, not only does obedience give us genocide, 
war, slavery, the worst atrocities throughout all human histories came out through uh, blind obedience, okay? So not only does blind obedience sort of destroy everything, um, but it's, it's, the, it's the one fucking goal that they want here. It's the one thing that they want here. It's more important. That there's two times. I got robbed when I was in 32nd and Woodlawn Avenue, and, um, and I got $1,800 worth of, sh of shit stolen out of my house. I had got robbed when I came here. So instead of actually giving a shit about my life or what it is that I was, you know, that I was doing, instead, the most important thing was to get me in this classroom and then immediately just start oppressing. Shut the fuck up, sit down, and stay over there. Um, there's none more worse than Pat Todd. Oh my God, Pat Todd is a fucking psychopath, okay? She is Cruella DeVille. She is just a pile of fucking wrinkles um, with a wart and some makeup. It doesn't matter how much makeup you put on yourself, it's not going to change the fact that you're 90 fucking five years old. I asked her if she had something to do with the, uh, the, the uh, busing in Louisville and how there's a, they undid um, you know, the, the, uh, the busing plan. So in 75, they forced Louisville to integrate through busing, and then 2007, it was undone. So essentially, you know, either we're at the promised land and we're at some racial harmony, or we're going to go back to desegregation, or back to segregation, not back to desegregation, but we'll go back to segregation. Right now, we have de facto segregation when it comes to housing. And so community schools and neighborhood schools are the, uh, the prevailing, that's what we're doing, then, then those schools in the predominantly black or predominantly white neighborhood will mostly be predominantly black or predominantly white. So integration, I guess the great experiment has failed, I guess, or we're integrated enough. Hopefully that's best. I asked her about that question, but it doesn't matter because essentially I don't know what her fucking problem was. Maybe she could just tell, but I sit, you know, and I, I sit tall and I sit proud. But she would just harass me constantly when I was in class. I, I had grabbed a newspaper off the, you know, the mansion has all these uh, different newspapers. I had grabbed one of them on the way over here, and I just had it sat on my desk. And then she came over and she's like, you're not going to be reading this, are you? You're not reading this, are you? And it was just in your face. It was de demeaning, derogatory. It was shitty. And all they're doing, they're not teaching us shit that we actually need to know. They're just teaching us shit that they think that, you know, is important. And you could have found it all on Wikipedia or online just reading it yourself. Um, but instead, they feel like they have to read this shit to you, right? As if you don't know how to read your, your own stuff. Uh, Albert Einstein said all education is experience, all the rest is information. So everything, all experience is education. You want to get a real education? Go fuck, go do something, you know? Go try to build a bridge. Go build a fucking fence. Go shovel a sidewalk. Go make some food. You'll get an education. Um, and so, experience is education and everything else is just information. That's all they're giving uh, to us in modern day American schools is just information. And this is teacher training school. This is teacher training school. So not only are they, you know, uh, oppressing everybody here, but all the people that I've seen here are internalizing these values. And they're going to go into the workforce and they're going to do the same shit that they're going to treat um, those students exactly how they got treated here and what's most important here well when you have a dying um, profession when there is no point to have a fucking professor and 30 different students all doing the same shit since that is that whole structure that whole mentality that authoritarianism that very limits uh, it's very limiting with your own individuality with your individual autonomy um, um, it's just it's it's outdated and it's archaic and it's and it's being quickly um, you know, not valued, and it shouldn't be valued because there is no value to it. What I did here at Spalding University paid so much fucking money, twenty fucking thousand dollars or some shit, and um, I didn't get educated. I didn't get the networks that I needed. I wasn't allowed to talk to my peers because shut the fuck up. I'm the professor. Don't you talk, you motherfucker. And then all of them are a bunch of obedient fucking you know Nazi dick suckers. And so what am I supposed to do? You know, try to wake them up and say, hey, Nazi obedient dick suckers, stop being Nazi obedient dick suckers. No, they'd be insulted and they would hate it and then they wouldn't want to talk to me. Or, or maybe I could have woken them up. Maybe I could have done something. But shit, just me being out here by myself, essentially all I did by saying I question education is I put a fucking target right on me. I question education. That's right, I question. I, now it's not even a fucking question. The, the entire authoritarian, totalitarian 
autocratic dictatorship is just fucking bullshit. The, uh, the love of the oppressor is a love of death. It's a sadistic love. It's necrophilic. They love to control you as an object because they don't believe you're a thing. They don't believe you're a person. They think of you as just a, a thing to be manipulated. They take away your dignity, take away your freedom. They take away it all. So, uh, Julie Chancellor, I didn't finish Pat Ty, but Julie Chancellor, um, she had uh, she had stopped me from saying talking about the 1855 Know Nothing riots. And that was a riot that happened here in Louisville. So, what is so damn important? She's willing to fucking fuck up my entire life, my entire fucking, for two years, $60,000. I've been going to different schools. I've been to about a dozen different schools. I've wrote all these papers. I did all the stupid shit that they fucking told me to do. No, I don't value it. No, I think it's completely bullshit and it's bogus. But you don't want me to say that because that means we got to do something different than what we're doing. And you're very comfortable. Yeah, the teacher, Julie Chancellor, she's very comfortable. She's got a nice job. You know, upper class, white woman. I'm sure she's had a real hard struggle. Um, but even the Ku Klux Klan would defend white women. So really, I don't know how much... Uh, of a struggle white women really have to... When I told her that I got robbed last week and that I couldn't come in, she didn't even blink an eye. You know, to have such a lack of empathy, like, she don't even give a shit, like, you, if you was fucking robbed, your fucking door's broken, and then all your fucking valuables and shit's taken out, you, you're not gonna be a little bit shooken up, you're not gonna be a little bit traumatized. She didn't even blink an eye. She didn't even give a fuck. And that's, that's a psychopathic oppressor. Psychopathic oppressors don't care. They don't have any empathy for you. They want you to be their bitch. So shut the fuck up and sit down. I'm the fucking boss and I got no fucking heart, no feelings, no empathy for you. Shut the fuck up. Don't make me look bad. And I'm going to micromanage every single one of you all in here.